welcome back to my channel my name is Isaya if you're new here today I will share with you my F1 visa experience how I literally got my visa approved in less than four minutes if this interests you definitely keep watching all the way to the very end don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment your thoughts in the comment section okay see ya October 2020 in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, although my program started in August, but due to COVID and the closure of embassies, we couldn't get dates until October. So I arrived there with all my documents intact. I'll be listing it on the screen, all the documents that I took. My passport, DS-160 confirmation, my service fee payment, my GT bank, um, visa payment, receipt, my I-20, updated I-20 from school, the scholarship letter I got, my transcripts from undergrad, my GRE score, which was not necessary, like nobody asked me for it, and then my passport photograph. So in 2020, there used to be a reciprocity fee of about $110, which was about 45,000 Naira at the time. And how it works is when they issue the visa to you, you pay them the money in cash. But somehow I just forgot to bring my cash that day. And when you get there, you find people like literally this is something that you should know. If you're getting your appointment either in Lagos or Abuja, anywhere in Nigeria, many times those people that you see outside asking you madam come and photocopy come and snap passports come and do this come and do that do not listen to them just keep going straight into where you are going to because those ones are just distractions on the way anyways one of them had cash apparently they were selling cash so they will sell 10k for 1k and because i needed 45k um i had to pay them I think I, I think I had to pay like 49,000 because for 40k I paid like 4k and then for the extra 5k I paid another 1k so it was literally like almost 50,000 that I paid <laughs> it's so funny I paid 50,000 to get 45,000 but anyways that was by the consequence of forgetting to bring cash from the house this video is basically about my experience right I'll do another video for um, what what things you should prepare for ahead of your visa interview and how to avoid being rejected there if you want to see that video please drop a comment below let me see if that's something you are anticipating and i'll definitely push out the video on how to avoid being rejected when you go for your interview anyways so i got there around 8 a.m and my appointment was for 10 so we waited in the parking lot for a bit and then they started to call us out and then we joined the queue long lines before we finally entered into the hall the hall is like a banking hall i don't know if it's the same at this time but it was a it was an open hall with different cashiers in quotes which were like interviewers so um i remember there were like six different people who were interviewing people and because it was an open space you could literally if you wanted to pay attention to what was happening what somebody if you wanted to pay attention to someone's conversation you could literally just like sit in there and be hearing what is going on so we formed a straight line inside and we were just like dispersing to the next available cashier in quotes or the next available interviewer that was done interviewing and i remember clearly that the person in front of me i wasn't paying attention to their conversation because the person's voice was low and the interviewer's voice was low as well but i was paying attention to someone on the other side which was quite interesting because she didn't get a fully funded scholarship and they were asking her about how she was going to pay for the deficit and she she said her uncle was her sponsor and the interviewer was asking her how to prove ties with this uncle like how is this person your uncle how do i know that this person is your uncle and she was really trying to you know defend herself and explain the ties that she had with him and they had so many like interesting questions that even though i was standing i was like 
listening like oh my god wow <laughs> and i was listening to the conversation now mind you there was somebody right in front of me that was also interviewing but because their voice was low i couldn't really hear what they were saying and i was paying attention to somebody on this side even though i was standing like this and facing here my ears were like this listening to what was going on on this side and as that conversation was going on in front of me i immediately heard sorry i'm unable to give you your visa next please and i was like oh my god <laughs> what <laughs> like oh my goodness and i literally just walked to the front i was like oh my god i was not paying attention to these people like i don't even know what this person the lady because there was a lady that was in front of me i don't even know what she said that i shouldn't say for her not to get the visa like oh my god but anyways i just walked to the front and i immediately got afraid with the rejection that i had but immediately i stood in front of him i just like shoved that fear away and i stood very confident and i just smiled and i greeted him and the first question he asked me was why are you here why do you want this visa and i said i needed this visa to pursue my masters of business administration at arizona state university and then he said why arizona state university i told him the reason while i was there speaking he asked me the next question like like he was just going fast 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 like literally not even giving me an avenue to breathe <laughs> So the third question he asked me was what other schools did you apply to? I, I was going to list like maybe five but as, as I got to the third one he immediately said okay so why why not that school and I said oh Arizona State is preferred for this this and this and then the next question he asked me was how are you funding your education and I said I got a fully funded scholarship and a graduate assistantship role that covers for my living expenses and then the next question he asked me, he asked me, have you traveled outside the country before? And I said, yes, I've been to United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, say my Emirates, United Arab Emirates and some other African countries. And while I was here saying that, he said, are you married? I said, no. Do you have children? I said, no. And then he just looked down on his computer, wrote down a couple of things for like a couple of seconds and he, and he said congratulations i'm going to give you a visa move over to that side to go and pay the fees next and i was like <laughs> okay wow it's a miracle working god because i i did not know what to expect from hearing that the person right in front of me got rejected and i was not even sure of the reason why she was rejected because she seemed put together she had her documents like i know that i'd seen her put her documents and everything and she was going for an mba program as well i don't know if she got full funding or not but i was just so surprised and i was so thankful at the same time so i paid the reciprocity fee and then they said that they will have our passport sent to us within like two weeks or so they didn't even ask me for my bank statements, all the plenty documents that I took there. They didn't ask for it. But this is not to say that they didn't ask for these documents from other people as well. In the next video that I will be doing, and if you want to see that as well, I'll be talking about some essentials that you should be taking and some things you should be preparing ahead if you do not have a fully funded scholarship. So let me know in the comment section if you would like to see that video. If you enjoyed watching this video, definitely give this video a thumbs up. I'll be looking forward to seeing your comments in the comment section. And let me know where you're viewing this video from and let me know where you're headed to in the fall for your program. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because why not? I'm here to give you the tea so you should definitely subscribe and hit the bell notification button so that you'll be the first to be notified anytime I share new content. Now some other questions that they asked other people that were in the same hall as I was while I was waiting to have mine was asking people if they had siblings in the United States, what they were doing, what those siblings were doing at the time if they had a deficit how they were going to pay for the deficit 
how to prove ties that they were that they were coming back to their home country after their MBA program what their post grad school plans were for some people they asked them why they were planning to get another degree or trying to get that degree in their home country and why they felt the need to travel okay one thing that I must absolutely say to you is as you're headed for your visa interview is to leave fear at the door like leave fear once they they sight fear in your eyes they want to prey on that so bring your most confident self to the front of the interviewer the interviewer is probably suspecting that you're there to immigrate to jackpot in quotes but you're there to prove that you're coming to just get a student visa and to study so do your best to prove that to them and leave the rest out, okay when you get your visa don't forget to come back to this video and drop it in the comments and let's rejoice together okay thank you for being my guest again and don't forget to share this video with your network if you found it insightful bye